Hello again, everyone. Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Capricorn May 2018 horoscope forecast. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, people, first thing up is as far as uh, May goes, the sun will be in Taurus from the 1st until the 20th. So the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. Now, for Capricorn at this time, there could be a strong concentration of energy, focus, attention uh, injected uh, and put into romance, uh, love, uh, creative endeavors, uh, children, uh, gambling, speculation, uh, amusement, and enjoyment. And because we're talking about Taurus energy, this could be done um, with a lot of ponderous energy, uh, very per with a lot of persistence, patience, perseverance, even latent energy, and style in this and done in a very deliberate and methodical manner. Even things of a speculative nature may be done with a lot of, uh, really a lot of that ponderous uh, Taurus-like energy. It could be a lot of contemplation and uh, before actually acting upon uh, anything. And anyway, um, well, the next um, thing up, uh, the sun will be in Gemini as far as May goes from the 20th until uh, the 31st. So the sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, there could be a strong concentration of energy, focus, and attention put into health, work, employment, the daily routine, pets, uh, service, uh, hygiene, and even aunts and uncles, because remember that uh, the, the sixth house were, does represent the less dominant parents, uh, siblings. So we're talking about aunts and uncles as well. And this could be done with a lot of that Gemini-like animated energy, with a lot of vivaciousness, spirit, a uh, very spirited manner, very lively manner. Uh, with effervescence, but uh, at the same time, it could be done a little bit superficially uh, and really uh, make sure as far, I mean, Gemini energy could also be vicarious, so just make sure that it's not like you're living through somebody else's work and to, if you're trying to accomplish something or even do something different as far as an employment standpoint uh, goes. And um, even, I mean, in, in the sun uh, can be can also can be connected with the left or the right eye, depending on whether you're male or female. So just uh, there could, if, especially if this is making an inconjunct to your ascendant, this could be, uh, you know, some eye issues are possible here. Also, too, that when we're talking about this energy, the sun could also shine, shine the light, perhaps on some Gemini. Uh, like health issues, um, such as something with the hands or the fingers or the arms. So anyway, well, the next thing up is the new moon will be in Taurus on May 15th. So the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time um, for Capricorn, well, uh, this could be in some cases if uh, Capricorn is unattached, a new Taurus love relationship or child even a Taurus love relationship can be uh, a Taurus a sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply one that embodies Taurus-like characteristics. This could be starting something new, uh, connected with something enjoyable and something to, with amusement that uh, may be done with a lot of Taurus-like persistence, tenacity, and steadfastness as well. Or even a Taurus-like uh, hobby or, or thing of enjoyment can be embarked on at this time, such as even playing Monopoly or doing something uh, connected with a coin collecting, doing something with gardening, cultivation, studying stocks and bonds, uh, perhaps could be uh, another example. So um, anyway, well, um, the next thing uh, up is, well, the full moon uh, will be in Sagittarius on May 29th. So the 12th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, well, Capricorn may become exasperated, tired, full, so to speak, of an overly, perhaps a foolhardy, uh, blunt, uh, reckless, uh, flighty, overly voracious to the point of embarrassing or demoralizing someone. It could be an aunt or an uncle or somebody even in one's 
uh, private or personal life. And uh, this could also be something where, um, you know, you're talking about the 12th house energy and it could be where a uh, hidden adversary could be exposed at this time, which could be a Sagittarius sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply one that embodies Sagittarius-like characteristics. This could be the uh, completion or culmination of a Sagittarius project that may be done in solitude or seclusion, something connected with sports, philosophy, uh, religion. Uh, it could be something associated with foreign countries, uh, perhaps. Now, also, too, the way this can manifest, this could be where you just may simply put a lot of exuberant, enthusiastic, and expansive emotional energy into, into something 12th house related, such as helping those less fortunate uh, than yourself, such as those uh, that are oppressed, uh, homeless, uh, hungry, and impoverished. And also a lot of this emotional energy, perhaps into tackling maybe uh, limitations and uh, restrictions uh, at this time. So anyway, well, the next thing up is as far as May goes, Mercury will be in Aries from the 1st until the 13th. So the fourth house is will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, uh, the way this could manifest, it could be where you may just simply be very uh, more outspoken, aggressive, assertive, and forthright and direct in your communications with home and family members and people you may simply feel uh, close uh, to home with. There may be more abrupt communications connected with one's roots, uh, one's traditions, and maybe even more uh, original pioneering thinking that is uh, done in connection with your home and your family members. And really, uh, remember that Mercury is not just about communication. It rules other things such as siblings. And this could be dealing with perhaps some combative and even aggressive uh, siblings that might impact your home life a little bit more so uh, than usual uh, at this time. And really this could be where you're talking very frankly about uh, matters uh, connected with your emotional security and what would make you feel uh, emotionally secure. So anyway, well, the next thing up is uh, Mercury will be in Taurus as far as May goes from the 13th until the 29th. So the fifth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, this could be uh, a lot of uh, deliberate, ponderous, uh, persistent, steady, and methodical communications, uh, perhaps uh, connected um, with children, uh, with a love romantic partner, it could be with people that you uh, share a hobby or creative endeavor uh, with. Also, too, this could be about also learning through things demonstrated visually, which might be tied into something that you enjoy. It could be a hobby. Um, it could be just something that's connected uh, with enjoyment, perhaps. And uh, maybe, and in, in really at this time, too, uh, remember, as I've stated uh, before, that Mercury is uh, more than just about communication. It can be connected with siblings as well. So this could be about dealing perhaps with stubborn but yet loyal and steadfast siblings that might uh, impact uh, your fun, your enjoyment uh, to some degree uh, at this time. And anyway, and also about talking about, you know, your values that, that might be tied in uh, with children, uh, love your love romantic life and your amusement and enjoyment and also maybe formulation of monetary ideas for perhaps a child or somebody you're in a romantic uh, relationship with. So anyway, well next thing up is Mercury will be in Gemini as far as May goes from the 29th until the 31st. So the sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. For Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, well, Capricorn might be more talkative and loquacious uh, regarding uh, work issues at this time and matters pertaining to their health and with people that are in their daily uh, routine. Now, um, I mean, if this is making an in conjunct to the ascendant and being given, we're talking about the sixth house energy in Gemini, this in Mercury, I mean, there may be some breathing issues uh, at this time where uh, Capricorn needs to be careful. And also, too, I mean, as I've talked about before, 
previously that mercury is more than just about communication it can rule siblings as well this could be about mercurial uh siblings perhaps uh that might uh factor in maybe more prominently in your daily routine maybe in your health and your employment life at this time as well and also talking about perhaps manifold things uh involved connected with people in your daily routine your mind might be more restless and worrisome than usual at this time and also assimilating perhaps a lot of information regarding health and employment matters but maybe superficially at this time as well it's really about talking about a lot of different uh subjects with people that are in uh your health life your employment your daily routine and uh really and, and maybe even people that you are uh with in service to if that is the case so anyway and um anyway the next thing up is venus will be in gemini as far as may goes from the first until the 19th so the sixth house again is what will be emphasized and highlighted for capricorn so at this time for capricorn well capricorn might uh, at this time be valuing strongly communications uh with aunts and uncles it could be uh expression and enjoyment of mental games such as haiku sudoku chess uh, tetris perhaps with an aunt or uncle at this time, people uh, that figure strongly in your daily routine or maybe people you work with in employment and also maybe making money through dexterity and, and communications and, and which is of course could be tied into one's employment. And also the love of variety and versatility in one's daily routine as well. It could be where money might be spent on manifold things uh, maybe uh, maybe it could be for an aunt, for an uncle, maybe people prominent in your daily routine, or maybe people you know in your work life, or maybe it's somehow tied into your service uh, for others uh, at this time. And also, I mean, remember that if uh, Capricorn, if you're unattached at this time, this could be a time where you might uh, connect uh, with a Gemini sun moon or ascendant or simply one that embodies Gemini like characteristics and could be someone prominent in your daily routine somebody in your uh, work your employment life or uh, maybe even in your health uh, life such as somebody that works out with you at a fitness center or something and even it's more uh, it's a little greater propensity to have two relationships simultaneously at this time since we're talking about uh gemini energy as well so anyway next thing up is uh venus will be in cancer as far as may goes from the 19th until the 31st so the seventh house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for capricorn so at this time for capricorn well it may be a time where um where capricorn if unattached may connect with a cancer sun moon or ascendant or simply one that embodies cancerian characteristics it could be somebody that might be in some seventh house field such as something uh connected uh with the law or you know somebody in in the legal field or an arbitration or some kind of negotiation also um this could be a time too where you might value in showing uh more sympathy to your open adversaries than usual at this time and maybe spending uh really um money where it's really where you're giving yourself protection maybe from open adversaries as well and this could be about a strong love of introversion in home and family that you express perhaps with the significant other at this time and valuing introversion perhaps with this person uh it could also be uh, a period too where you have uh, maybe a strong, more of a stronger love at this time than usual for safety and security in a business partnership or a relationship situation. And also uh, really, uh, and also in some cases, it could be spending tenaciously on legal fees if you are in some kind of legal battle at this time. So anyway, well, the next thing up is, well, Mars will be uh, in Capricorn. Uh, as far as uh, May goes, uh, from the 1st until the 19th. So the first house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, well, 
Uh, this could perhaps manifest in being a little bit more energetic and enthusiastic. You might be ha having more vitality and stamina than usual, and maybe your libido might be increased at this time as well. But remember, there can also be a greater propensity for accidents and also be more wary of gunfire uh, at this time. Now, um, also, the way this could work out is perhaps more, uh, not just being more energetic, but uh, but really expanding this and really more uh, disciplined, serious, and consistent energy, and perhaps toward the self, the physical body, and things connected with one's uh, self-interest. Now, also, too, uh, remember, Mars can be associated with surgery, so uh, it could be where you might be, uh, in some cases, have some surgery, uh, on something Capricorn related, such as the knees, the bones, or the joints. And you may be more outspoken than usual uh, at this time and show a lot more aggressiveness and assertiveness than you uh, generally do and a little bit more uh, impulsive than usual. So Capricorn is often very prudent and very premeditative, so it might be surprising some people at this time, maybe showing some more impulsiveness and, and being more impetuous than you usually are. Anyway, next thing up is Mars uh, will be in Aquarius as far as May goes from the 19th until the 31st. So the second house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time, well, uh, the situation perhaps with people that you generate money uh, with might be more acrimonious and contentious than usual. Also, too, uh, there might be more uh, really, uh, you might become angry, perhaps at uh, perhaps idiosyncratic or bizarre behavior with maybe somebody that you're generating income with, or somebody that might be involved, uh, might be tied into your resources or, or possessions at this time, and also uh, perhaps the expression of ingenuity at this time could help improve self-esteem and self-worth, and also. Um, maybe you might be expressing a lot of energy more so than usual into Aquarius-like things such as computers, electronics, uh, innovation. Um, could also be uh, esoteric subjects such as astrology, uh, aerospace, and it may be, and this could also be tied in, of course, toward making uh, more money maybe at this time. And again, as far as the self-worth goes, it can improve uh, that. And you might be a little bit more agitated over people maybe doing uh, something with your possessions, your resources, and more, and more exasperated over those things and have some uh, maybe unpredictable outbursts of anger at this time. So just be careful and be in, in, be in guard against that. So anyway, next thing up is, is uh, Jupiter will still be in Scorpio. So the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. It will be retrograde as well. Now, as I've talked about previously, you know that Jupiter can be uh, paradoxical. It's very strongly benign and benevolent, but it could also have a tendency to expand and enlarge. And this could, in some cases, expand sometimes surreptitious, uh, manipulative, and even nefarious behavior uh, associated perhaps with friends, acquaintances, people you may know in some kind of group or organization. And uh, Two, this could also, the way this could manifest, it could be about putting a lot of exuberant and enthusiasm into uh, something uh, Aquarius, I'm sorry, something Scorpio related, such as the occult, supernatural astrology, uh, investigation, uh, locksmithing, and it could be something that's connected with an aspiration or a goal of yours at this time, and also about having perhaps good luck and fortune by going beyond the superficial and subterfuge connected with friends, acquaintances, and maybe people that you uh, may know in some group or club or organization, uh, perhaps. And also remember being retrograde. This could be about reviewing maybe a profound, deep philosophy that might be connected uh, with one's uh, future and and really um, and, and matters connect and really about friends as well. So anyway. Well, the next thing up is Saturn will be uh, in Capricorn uh, still. So the first house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for 
Capricorn. So at this time, well, Capricorn may be experiencing some uh, restrictions and limitations, perhaps connected uh, with the physical body, maybe making that first impression on others. And, and, it, it, and also, this could be a time too. remember when Saturn is, uh, you're talking about Saturn in the first house, and especially if this is actually hitting the literal first house in the natal chart, this the way this could manifest is actually having more of a propensity to lose weight at this time. And also too, uh, looking at this, I mean, you might be even a little bit more downcast and pessimistic than you are uh, us than usual at this time. And um, another way this can manifest perhaps is maybe having to take care maybe of somebody that you knew from your early childhood that may be debilitated or and sickly and maybe have uh, some Capricorn uh, like debilitation, something connected with the knees, the bones or the joints. Uh, perhaps at this time and also too uh, the way this could work out remember that it is given that it's going to be retrograde that this could be about a review of responsibilities uh, connected uh, to your uh, physical body perhaps uh, especially if this is actually the first house in your natal chart your outlook on life and maybe even maybe to someone that you may know from your early uh, childhood and also making responsibilities reviewing them to new beginnings perhaps at this time and you might appear even more despondent and melancholy than usual at this time since Saturn is of course the sad uh, planet so anyway well the next thing up as far as uh, May goes Uranus will be in Aries uh, from May 1st uh, to the 15th, so the fourth houses will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, well, the way this could work out, I mean, you may, your home life might simply be more erratic and sporadic than usual and more disruptions uh, connected with it. You might see some unusual volatile behavior, maybe from a family member or someone you are uh, feel close to home with at this time, and maybe even more bizarre behavior, unorthodox behavior from family members. And also you might see, uh, this could be about maybe some unusual, very unique uh, foundations you, you might begin at this time. And also too, uh, this could be the way this could manifest perhaps is using maybe the computer and internet to help kind of determine ascertain your end of life conditions what you want for your end of uh, your life as far as maybe for example making the uh, an investment retirement plan uh, also too family members might be expressing some ingenious qualities at this time and also be more careful uh, Capricorn during this time uh, regarding maybe uh, electric shocks in the homes, make sure you're grounded or whatever you need to do when taking precautions when you're dealing with wiring, if, if you are going to deal with it, because there could be a little greater propensity to get the shock in a home at this time and also lightning perhaps hitting uh, the home. So just a little greater propensity than usual. So anyway, well, well, the next thing uh, up is, well, um, as far as May goes, Uranus will be in Taurus from the 15th until the 31st. So the fifth house is will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, well, you might be uh, dealing with some unusual uh, obstinate lovers at this time or, or even children at this time. This could be about maybe the formulation of a, mon of a monetary uh, plan of a new, new uh, monetary plan for yourself that maybe or I should say maybe for a child or maybe uh, connected with a romantic partner uh, at this time and expressing original uh, ideas maybe perhaps to make money uh, with them so also too uh, looking at this this could be where um, I mean friendships uh, might figure more prominently in your amusement your enjoyment at this time than usual and also too you might adopt maybe some uh, kind of uh, unusual hobby at this time or it might be something uh, Uranus like uh, something perhaps connected with computers perhaps and being in Taurus may be done in a very persistent manner uh, 
It could be an esoteric subject such as astrology, computers, electronics, uh, aerospace, astronomy, perhaps something that might be uh, Uranus-like at this time. So anyway, well, uh, the next thing up is Neptune uh, will be in Pisces still. So the third house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, well, this could be in some cases about certain maybe dissipation and dissolving of communications and maybe connections with your neighbors uh, at this time. Uh, also, too, um, siblings and or neighbors, uh, maybe or one or more may be involved, maybe in some kind of uh, drugs or alcohol at this time. And maybe a sibling or neighbor even can be in danger, maybe of accidental assimilation of a chemical such as radon. And also, too, remember that Neptune can be about disappearances as well. So it does increase the chance, the probability, just a little bit of maybe somebody that you may know well in your neighborhood or maybe a sibling might go missing uh, at this time. And also, it could be where documents might have maybe a little greater propensity to become missing. It could be where you communicate regarding your dreams a little more at this time than usual. And uh, two, uh, remember that Neptune can be about allergies. So just, I mean, you're taking short journeys at this time. I think it's important, you know, just to be wary uh, of this. And um, also, too, this could be the way this could manifest could be about writings connected uh, with something Neptune like such as the metaphysical, which includes astrology, something spiritual, maybe writing about something uh, connected with pharmaceutical uh, drugs or uh, writing about chemistry, uh, photography, something that may be a uh, Neptune uh, related. Uh, so anyway, and also there might be more confounding issues that are tied in maybe with siblings, with neighbors, and even with local, uh, with your transportation uh, at this time. And also be careful because, I mean, Neptune is, of course, connected with drugs and alcohol. And if you're a drinker, be more uh, more prudent when you're driving. If you're driving, well, you know, uh, make sure that you're not, you know, driving under the influence because there's a greater chance of that to happen at this time than many other uh, transits. So anyway, Next thing up is Pluto will be in Capricorn still, so the first house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So at this time for Capricorn, well, uh, this could be the way this can manifest. I know a lot of you don't want me to say the dreaded D word, but of course you know I do anyway. Uh, that someone uh, from your, I mean, sometimes this could be about a literal death. I mean, it could be someone from your early uh, childhood and also too, uh, I mean, in some cases, the person in question could, I mean, as a little greater, uh, you know, proclivity or propensity, I should say, for death at this time. Generally, that is not uh, what happens, but it does increase the chances, maybe, you know, in a minuscule uh, where, you know, where that could happen. But it's still minuscule, the uh, the, the chances of that inc um, actually happening in terms of increasing, uh, you know what I'm saying, the... Uh, <laughs> The probability, the actual, uh, the actual, where I'm, what I'm saying is the chances that it could actually, uh, you know, the propensity for it to actually happen is a little bit greater with, um, you know, with Pluto. You're talking about Pluto, especially when it's the, you know, the ascendant, the physical body toward death than usual. So anyway, the next thing as far as this goes is that oh, um, I think what's important is to avoid perhaps obsessive uh, compulsive tendencies at this time and also Pluto can be about surgery as well so it could be where there's a little greater probability though minuscule in terms of actually getting surgery um, at this time and it could be on something Capricorn related such as something connected with the knees the bones or the joints or even the skin uh, at this time and also uh, really you might it might be more a propensity to experience um, power struggles maybe with someone from your early childhood uh, than usual at this time and guard against becoming overly um, you know you know power hungry uh, manipulative at this time as this could increase those chances um, 
by by a little bit and then marginally so anyway that's the word i think i was looking for was talking about as far as the propensity uh toward death can increase it's just marginally by a minuscule amount but it's still a little greater probability when you're talking about pluto so anyway um that being said well the next thing up is well um the north node uh, will be in um, in Leo uh, at this time still. So the eighth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for Capricorn. So when you're talking about the North Node uh, in transit, this could be about issues that one may have to confront and address. And given uh, that it's Leo and it's the eighth house, this could be about maybe having to confront uh, maybe a uh, someone you're having an intimate or sexual relationship with that might be rather arrogant, bombastic, overbearing, flamboyant, egotistical, and maybe even domineering at this time. And also too about really being directed toward perhaps taking pride and dignity in making a major change or transformation, showing fortitude and courage perhaps in crisis situations, and maybe even being more magnanimous and generous in matters connected with shared or um, or shared resources and also in giving maybe a uh, moral and emotional support to others this time as well so showing self-assuredness in making a major change or transformation and even maybe issues that may involve maybe having to be a little bit more extravagant maybe over issues connected even with surgery at times or even uh, matters connected with insurance and maybe even the surgery may be something leo related such as something with the upper back or the heart anyway next thing up is the black moon lilith will be uh in capricorn still so the first house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for capricorn so at this time uh for capricorn well this could be the way this could manifest for Capricorn could be, well, um, when, when you're talking about the black moon uh, Lilith, uh, this could be what uh, what may put one in a strong state of fright or trepidation. And this could be maybe about re having to relinquish authority, maybe over someone you knew from your early childhood, or maybe about what you can do in terms of uh, controlling new beginnings, uh, perhaps. Uh, and really about, uh, I, I think, too, uh, when you look at this, uh, this could be also when, uh, you know, you're talking about Black Moon Lilith and Capricorn. This could be the way this could manifest, perhaps, is a uh, someone you may know, um, you know, a, a formidable Capricorn adversary may be revealed or unveiled. It could be a Capricorn sun, moon, or ascendant, or simply one that embodies uh, Capricorn-like characteristics could be someone you knew from your early childhood, someone that might be figured uh, prominently and maybe uh, a new beginning, uh, and it, and even in some cases might even be yourself. Uh, sometimes it could be where you might be maybe a revelation to yourself that maybe you've been your own worst enemy, maybe being having an overly maybe pessimistic uh, outlook, for example, and also too. At this time as well, uh, this could be too a, a, another thing um, that may something that may come out of the bag, so to speak, that you don't want out, but somehow gets unveiled. Maybe uh, could be about maybe a rather limiting or, or depressing or overly negative or pessimistic outlook uh, on life uh, may come out. Uh, at this time that you didn't want to be unveiled, but maybe for whatever reason uh, it does, and maybe a very, rather depressing outlook on life or where maybe you, you're just very maybe despondent and melancholy in general, and you just didn't want um, anyone to know about it. So anyway, well, last but not least, um, Chiron will be in Aries still, so the fourth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted for uh, Capricorn. Well, the thing about this is when you're talking about um, Chiron and Aries uh, and in transit, this could be about I mean, it, where uh, you may feel some lack of uh, worthiness and it might be given the fourth house, maybe who you are uh, at the core. And it could be about maybe or where you maybe you just don't feel uh, worthy, maybe in terms of being a, a family member, maybe due to lack of 
maybe it could be confrontational ability or standing up for family members maybe or or where it was something associated with lack of enterprise and initiative or maybe uh difficulty in being maybe showing leadership uh in matters connected with your family or maybe someone you feel close to home with also too this could be about some emotional suffering and um and wounds associated uh perhaps with acrimonious and contentious situations uh at home or maybe with someone you feel close to home with and also you might really feel uh really maybe lack of worthiness of who you are at the core uh at this time uh as well and the thing about this too uh really uh the way this could the way this could work out too is that i mean you're talking about uh the really the the fourth house and um really the fourth house also represents the end of life so it could be where maybe you're not at this time not using enough uh assertiveness or i should say um initiative and enterprise and doing the things that are necessary to get prepared for that and there can be some strong repercussions uh for this of course by by not doing so i mean i don't have this transit going on and there, there's been certain things with me where i haven't really uh done due diligence in terms of getting whatever i needed ready for the latter part of my life but this could really be emphasized with somebody having this kind of transit going on uh so anyway but remember that when you're talking about uh the chiron uh, transit the way this could work out is that i mean you know with areas i mean chiron is the wounded healer so in the areas connected with chiron and aries and the fourth house that you might be going through some emotional wounds and suffering with and having difficulties with you could help others dealing with comparable situations and and do so with a lot of areas like courage fortitude aggressiveness assertiveness and enterprise anyway people that will conclude this youtube astrological segment for my capricorn may 2018 horoscope forecast stay tuned next time where i'll be giving you my aquarius uh, may 2018 horoscope forecast two things i want to get with you on before i head out firstly the stars may impel but do not compel and secondly never isolate any single astrological element aspect planetary placement position configuration influence or what have you and make an analysis of a person astrologically speaking based on this alone because astrologically speaking the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one until next time people stay well